I'd just like to end on the doctrine of lesser magistrates. A lesser magistrate is someone subject to a higher earthly authority. Uh, so all of us, in effect, are lesser magistrates, but most especially, say, the school principal, school board member, etc. And the doctrine of lesser magistrates stands for the proposition that you have a duty to interpose and protect those under you from those above you. In other words, if someone in a higher authority above you gives you an unlawful order and tells you to do something that would harm those below you, you have a duty to protect them. So for instance, the school board members have a duty to protect the principals, the teachers, the students. The principals have a duty to protect the teachers and the students. The teachers have a duty to protect the students and ultimately every parent, as I showed, has a duty to protect his own children. So when these authorities say you must subject the students, the children, to this type of thing, you as a parent, a teacher, a principal, administrator, etc., have a duty to not only say no, but to stand in the way and protect those children. Uh, think back, and an easy thing to think about is the Nuremberg trials, right? What was the excuse of the Nazi soldiers? Why did they murder the Jews? Yeah, I was told to. If I, if I didn't murder this Jew, then I'd be you know, maybe fired, or I might be murdered. And hey, my job's too important, my life's too important, so I just did what I was told. Who set up those trials? We did, right? The United States. And what did we say? Oh, okay, you were following orders? Well, hey. No, we said that's not an excuse. You had a duty to protect those people, and you failed in that duty, and you're held accountable. Well. We know we might be, not be held accountable for this on this earth, but in the end, we're gonna be held accountable. So if everyone would stand up and do his duty, we wouldn't have these problems. Thank you. Look up the term interposition, because that's what he was just talking about. And there are books written on interposition. Um, the, w another thing I want to follow up on with the video you just saw, you heard that Ames Webb is a Pearson company. Go to the SEC filing of Pearson, okay, the Security Exchange Commission filings of Pearson, and you will find that in the risk section, because they have to report to shareholders what their risks would be if they invest in this, they say, we collect personally identifiable student data. If we are breached, we are liable. Okay. So this isn't just about warehousing for government planned economy. This is also private corporations without parental permission collecting student data, warehousing it without your awareness, and then doing the uh, data mining. So um, the next thing about the math, this is called um, constructivist math. It was introduced in California in the 1990s. It was thrown out of California by the parents. It was the grassroots who said, we're not taking this. And so it's not enough to just be aware with information and to share it, you must act. If you withdraw your child from the public schools, and I am for public schools because I am Jeffersonian in my belief that public schools are for perpetuating the republic, okay? And we have the best idea in history on how to govern people, but I will tell you where it came from. Chapter 18 of the book of Exodus. Okay, John Locke, if you read the treaties on government, he footnotes the scriptures, the book of Exodus, as the design of the republic. Now do you see why we're getting bashed? The point is, we need public schools to transfer that information to our children. Any private entity will not be beholding to the public to transmit the public good. It can sell whatever it wants. It is only the public schools accountable to the taxpayers who are obliged to continue the republic. That's why I'm a public school advocate. But I will tell you in the short term, if you want to save the children in this window of time, you must withdraw them. Then the thing, what it will do is it will screw up the funding formula in uh, Juneau. Because the funding formula, if I'm not mistaken, all states base their funding formula 
on per child attendance in schools. If you pull them out, then what you're doing is decreasing the amount of funding that will go, and there is a baseline for this budget in the data collection and the hardware, yada, yada. And don't forget this hardware has to be replaced every two years. That's called life cycle funding. So if you get this infrastructure put in place, no matter what freebies you got now, you will be the ones they go to to pick your pocket to renew all of this hardware and, and update the software. All right, and that's why once they lock you into place, you are the cash cow. So my advice is be pro-public school for the good of your country. But in the short term, it's like playing chess. You have to play to the short-term moves to survive, but you have to win the long-term game. So your children won't survive in the short term if you don't do something fast to implode the system and to save their minds. But in the long term, advocate to restore the true purpose of education and support your public schools. Okay? And so it, it sounds like it's dichotomous, maybe it is, but we can handle that complexity because we're the adults in the room. All right. Well, I think. Uh, Going back to constitution, you have something in your hand that's extremely important. And this 2016 is a critical year. You have one vote that belongs to you. Nobody can take that away from you, and nobody can tell you how to vote. You are entitled to this one vote. But you have to become well-educated, well-informed, a citizen. Do not go out and meet your candidates. Listen to their sound bite. Challenge them with good questions. And look at the tracking record of voting they passed. What they said, what they did, sometimes are two separate things. There are lots of conservative imposters, liars. Do not vote for them just because they say what you want to hear right now. And the Democrats, at least you know, they're true colors, they're socialists, and some are communists, and some are progressives. But they're not so good Democrats who are moderate, blue dog Democrats. You could swing them over. But if you have conservative imposters tell you what you want to hear, take your vote, they go to Washington, they go to your state capital, they do squat douche, they betray you, and you'll be like, Better the woman and keep hoping for them and keep working for them, whining, complaining, hope there's a miracle next day. It's not going to happen. The best we can do is divorce them, walk away, and start over in your life. So exercise in one vote carefully. You are owner of this country. You are higher employees working for you. You don't want to be absent owners of this country. Don't pay attention. Just like I'm a real estate investor, if I gave all my housing management to a property management company, they screwed up. They screwed up so bad as a person working for me, who's responsible? I am because I'm not paying attention. I'm not holding them accountable. I'm paying them salaries. It's all wasted. <coughs> then they are corrupt. They sold me out. So be responsible homeowners and be responsible country owners and parents. Thank you. With that, I'm going to, these guys are awesome, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you guys, we got a rock star team. Um, I just wanted to tell you real quick, this is my, um, my mother-in-law's, um, she just passed away, but this is precious. This is why I chose the background of the chalkboard. My, my new daughter-in-law that, that I'm going to have is going to become a teacher. Always wanted a daughter, so I'm just thrilled. She's going to be a teacher. She's being indoctrinated right now with Common Core from one of the most conservative universities in the nation. It's breaking my heart. As many other issues as I want to get involved in education, it's one that I've decided I'm, I'm going to take on and I'm not going to let it go because it's for the kids. But one of my, my rock star heroes is a guy named Brad McQueen. Brad McQueen wrote this book called The Common Core. He wrote this, and this is for each and every single one of you. This is the dedication. 
He wrote the following. He says, dedicated to your mama, and I modify it. It's his daddy, uncles, aunts, cousins, nephews. Grizzlies. And you mothers who first sensed danger posed by the cult of the Common Core to our kids. You refused to retreat. You refused to be quiet. You continued to fearlessly fight to protect our children and our country. You are an inspiration. Please get this book. I gave three copies of this to Senator Sullivan, and this is why my heart is broken. He has this book. He had three copies. He said he was a the Common Core and he would not support it. I know he held him accountable. As much as I love this man, I do. I do. I think he is amazing. But I'm going to hold him out of accountable because I do respect him. Okay? I'm going to work with him, but he better repeal this crap. Okay? He's good. <laughs>